Hi, Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is video AB05. The topic is limits from an algebraic point of view. It covers the AB manual, pages 21 through 24. In the previous show, we found that finding the limit of f of x as x approaches a, we can graph the function and generally find the limit. However, graphing takes time and it is often inaccurate. So we need to find an algebraic approach. We will see that there are four possibilities in finding these limits by an algebraic method. The first technique you should use to find the limit of f of x as x approaches a is simply plugging in a to the expression. So in the limit of x squared minus 4x plus 1 as x approaches negative 2, plug in negative 2 and we get 4 plus 8 plus 1 which is 13. In the second example the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 2x minus 6 over x minus 1, plugging in negative 1 for x we get 4. And finally the limit as x approaches pi of 2 cosine x minus x over x plus 2 Plugging in pi for x gets us to negative 1. Sometimes when you use the plugging in technique, you get 0 over 0. In that case, the limit of f of x as x approaches a may or may not exist. The first step that you can do to try to determine this is to factor both numerator and denominators of the expression. It is possible that you can get some cancellation. And if that happens, then the limit very well may exist. For instance, if we try to take the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x squared minus 2x minus 8 all over x plus 2, we get 0 over 0. However, if we factor the numerator, we get x minus 4 times x plus 2. The x plus 2's cancel out, and now we can simply plug in the limit of as x approaches negative 2 of x minus 4, and we get negative 6. To find the limit of 5x cubed minus 5x, all over x squared plus x as x approaches 0, plugging in gives us 0 over 0. However, in this case, we can factor both the numerator and denominator, getting 5x times the quantity x squared minus 1, all over x times x plus 1. The numerator factors again as 5x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. In this case, the x's and the x plus 1's cancel out, leaving the limit as x approaches 0 of 5 times x minus 1. We then plug in the x equals 0 to get 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. Notice that when we do plug in, we no longer write the limit anymore. Finally, to find the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x cubed minus 1, plugging in gives us 0 over 0. In this case, both numerator and denominator factor, and we end up getting the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 times x minus 1 all over x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. The x minus 1's cancel, and we have the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Plugging in, the numerator still goes to 0, but in this case the denominator goes to 3, so the limit turns out to be 0. In finding the limit of f of x as x approaches a, after plugging in a, or possibly factoring and then canceling, you get some constant over 0. We can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a does not exist. 
However, it is possible we can get more information to find whether the limit is infinity or negative infinity as well. This next problem will show the technique to do that. Suppose we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x plus 5 over x minus 2. We first start by plugging in 2, and we end up getting 9 over 0. We cannot factor the expression. Therefore, the answer to this problem is that the limit does not exist. However, we would like to determine whether it is possible that the answer, giving more information, could be plus infinity or negative infinity. To determine which, we plug in a number close to 2 on the left-hand side to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 2x plus 5 over x minus 2. Our answer will be some form of infinity. It's just needs to be determined whether it's a positive infinity or negative infinity. Plugging in 1.9, we get a positive over a negative, and we get negative infinity. We then look at the right-hand side. We determine the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 2x plus 5 over x minus 2. We plug in a number close to 2 on the right-hand side, like 2.1. We are not interested in the value of the answer, just the sign and we get positive over positive infinity. So the left-hand limit is negative infinity, the right-hand limit is positive infinity, and therefore the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x plus 5 over x minus 2 does not exist. To determine the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 over x squared, we first plug in x equals 0, and we get 4 over 0. Since there's no factorization that can occur, we know that the limit of 4 over x squared as x approaches 0 does not exist. However, searching for more information, we first look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 4 over x squared. It is some form of infinity using a number close to 0 on the left-hand side, like negative 0 0.1, we get positive over positive infinity. Looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 4 over x squared, we plug in a number close to 0, close to zero on the right-hand side, like 0 0.1. We again get positive over positive infinity. So since the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are the same, both equaling infinity, the limit of 4 over x squared as x approaches 0 is infinity. It doesn't exist, but this indicates that as x approaches 0, either from the left or from the right, the curve is going up forever. To determine the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared plus 2x minus 3 all over x squared plus 6x plus 9, we first plug in, and we get 0 over 0. We can factor both the numerator and denominator, as shown. The x plus 3s cancel out, and we get the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x minus 1 over x plus 3. Plugging in, we get negative 4 over 0, meaning that this limit does not exist. However, getting more information, finding the left-hand limit, we plug in a number close to negative 3 on the left-hand side. It makes no difference what this number is. We get negative over negative infinity. To find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right-hand side, we plug in a number close to negative 3 on the positive side of negative 3, and we end up getting negative over positive infinity, which is negative infinity. 
So since the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit do not exist, we say that the limit of the original expression does not exist. To find the limit as x approaches a of f of x, if when plugging in you get 0 over 0 and no cancellation can occur, we say this limit is indeterminate, which means we don't have enough information at this point to determine whether the limit exists or does not. For instance, when we look at the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, we get 0 over 0. No cancellation can occur, so this is an indeterminate form. Later in the course, we will find that this limit actually equals 1. The same is true on the next problem. The limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 all over x squared minus x. Plugging in, we get 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0. Again, this is indeterminate. It turns out that when we find get later information, we'll find that the limit actually is equal to negative 1. But for now, it is indeterminate. Sometimes there are little tricks that you can use to find limits. For instance, if we look at the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 all over x, we see that we get 0 over 0. It doesn't appear that there's any cancellation that can happen, and you might think that the answer would be indeterminate. However, it isn't. And if we multiply both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator, that is the square root of x plus 1 plus 1, over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Note that we get the limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 1 minus 1 over x times the quantity, the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. The 1's cancel out up top, and we can now cancel the two x's, and we get the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1, and our limit turns out to be 1 half. Sometimes we are given piecewise functions, and we need to find the limit at the value of a when the rule in the piecewise function changes. When that is true, we determine if the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right. To do this, we use the limit rules that we've established before. So in the piecewise function, f of x equals x squared minus 4 if x is less than or equal to 1, and negative 3x plus 1 if x is greater than 1. We first find the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left. We plug 1 into the top expression, getting 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. We also then look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right, and we plug in 1 into the bottom expression, getting negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So since the two limits are not equal to each other. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 does not exist. In the piecewise function shown, we want to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 2. We look at the left-hand limit, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the left, plugging in, we get 6. We also want the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right. We then plug into x cubed minus x, and we get 8 minus 2, which is also 6. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 6. Note that f of 2 is 4, which has nothing to do with the limit. In the piecewise function shown, we want to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3. We first 
find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the left. Plugging into the top expression, we get negative 3 over 0, which is undefined. That means this limit is some form of infinity. Plugging in a number close to negative 3, we get negative over negative, which is positive infinity. If x is if to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 from the right, we use the second function and we plug in a number close to negative 3 on the right hand side. We end up getting a positive over a positive infinity, which again is infinity. So therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 3 is infinity, even though f of negative 3 does not exist. If we want to find the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity, we first write f of x as a fraction. If the highest power of x is in the denominator, we'll call it a bottom-heavy expression. If the highest power of x is in the numerator, we'll call it a top-heavy expression. And if the highest power of x is in both numerator and denominator, we'll call it a powers equal expression. Limits as x approaches plus or minus infinity of bottom heavy expressions are always equal to zero. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x squared plus 50 over x cubed minus 85 is zero because the highest power is on the bottom. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of the square root of 1 minus x over x is also equal to 0 because the x has a power of 1 in the denominator and the x has a power of 1 half in the numerator. The limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of top-heavy expressions is plus or minus infinity. To determine which, you have to plug in either a very large number or very small number into the expression to determine whether it is positive or negative. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the fourth over 5x to the third plus 1 is either positive infinity or negative infinity. If x is a very large positive number, the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive, so the answer is positive infinity. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same expression will again be plus or minus infinity. If x is a very small number, like negative a thousand, negative a million, the numerator is positive, but the denominator is negative, making the answer negative infinity. The limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of powers equal expressions is simply the coefficient of the numerator's highest power over the coefficient of the denominator's highest power. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 1 over 5x to the third minus 7x minus 2 is 4 fifths, the coefficients of the x cubed terms. Nothing else is important. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of the square root of x squared minus 3x over 2x plus 1 is a powers equal expression. The highest power of x is simply x to the first power, as the square, the square root of an x squared is x. However, the numerator will have a will be positive, whereas as x approaches negative infinity, the denominator will be negative. So the answer to the problem is negative one half.